Hello and welcome to Quilt Addicts Anonymous. I'm Stephanie Sebane. This is our How to Make a T-Shirt Quilt series and in this lesson we're going to be showing you how to fuse the interfacing to the back of your t-shirts. That's what stabilizes the knit and keeps it from being all stretchy when you're trying to sew it to the sashing that is the quilting cotton and we're going to be able to have a nice square quilt top and everything is going to be fabulous. So if you are new to this series, if you're just seeing this video, it is a multi-part series where we take you through every step of making a t-shirt quilt. And if you watch it in real time with us and follow along, you will be able to finish your quilt in time to gift it for a graduation gift. I know that's a really common use of a t-shirt quilt is to gift it to a high school or a college graduate using all of their t-shirts from their time at that school. It's also really popular for graduation or for retirements, if there's a bunch of work t-shirts that they have over the years, as well as people who like to do races, or in this case, these are shirts that I've collected as I've traveled different places over the last 15 years. So they're really fun to do, they're really fun to gift. Just don't do like 100 of them, then you, you'll burn out on t-shirt quilts for sure. But if it's for a special someone, or yourself, it is definitely a fun project to do. And it's great for beginners because we don't actually have to piece anything. The piecing of the block is your t-shirt. And so you just get to add some sashing and sew it together. So it's a really good beginner project. So make sure you watch all the lessons up until now uh, in order to learn all the steps and the supplies that you need. And we also have a pattern available for you on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. If you buy the applique pressing sheet, which you need in today's lesson, and the interfacing, which you also need in today's lesson from us, we'll give you that pattern for free. So you can just add those to your cart and save with us. It's a great way to say thanks for all the free video tutorials. All right, so today we're going to be fusing the t-shirts to the interfacing. We're not gonna start with Don't Mess With Texas. This is the one where the design goes almost all the way out to the edges. So I saved this as our problem child t-shirt so that way you know like what to do if you have one that takes up almost the entire block design. We're gonna start with the easy one. And this one has our design, our screen printing in the center. And then we have a lot of just empty space which is gonna be good because when we put it next to designs like this one, it gives the eye a place to rest instead of having them all be super busy. But it's a lot easier to fuse, so that's where we're gonna to start today. So I'm gonna start by grabbing one square fusible interfacing. And I want the shiny side to be up. That's the side that has a fusible on it. If it looks rather dull and you can't feel any fusible on it, that is not the fusible side because we want the sticky side to stick to our t-shirt. Now next, I'm gonna lay my quilt block or my t-shirt block on over top of it. I'm not really concerned at this point with getting it exactly lined up because not gonna happen. Your t-shirt is either gonna be too small or it's gonna be too big at this point. It very rarely is right on. You can see mine is not wanting to lay nice and straight. It's kind of curling in. So we're gonna take this one corner at a time, one side at a time to get the outside fused down and then we're gonna go into the inside. Let me show you how to do that. So I'm just gonna start in this bottom corner. What I'm doing is I'm just lining it up so that my t-shirt is right on top where that fusible interfacing is. And we want to make sure that the t-shirt is in between because one, we don't wanna have wrinkles on our t-shirt for one, and two, it's a lot easier to get fusible off your ironing surface than it is off of your iron. So you always want to have fabric in between your fusible and your iron. So we can see that this is actually, it looks rather flat right now. That's because it's completely fused to the surface. This corner is good to go. So now I'm just gonna work my way around, going around the corners, not gonna worry so much about what's going on inside just yet, but I wanna get these corners tacked down first. So if I can, if I've got enough room to do it, I like to do maybe the first inch and a half to two inches of corner and get that fused down. And you really just have to hold it for a few seconds if you're not using the same interfacing that we have, make sure you're reading your manufacturer's instructions. You may have to hold it a little bit longer, but this stuff is pretty good. It fuses down fairly quickly as long as you have a, a hot iron on the cotton setting. That one was just a tad off, no big deal. It all kind of evens out. It's a very forgiving project. 
Now what you don't want to do at this step is like plop your iron like way down here, like say you're doing your corner and you get this whole section because we haven't lined up any of this yet. So if you put your iron down, you're going to stick your fabric to it. And in this case, it's kind of rolled under. It's not all the way to the edge. That's when you're going to start running into problems. But if you just take a little bit of each corner, you're going to be just fine. All right. So now what I like to do is kind of lift it up and lay it down. And that kind of gets everything nice and evenly spaced out because sometimes you are going to be having a little bit more material in the center than there actually is just because t-shirts behave differently as a fabric than quilting cotton. It's not going to stay at that nice 12 and a half inch because you cut it at 12 and a half inch. It has a mind of its own. It's going to do its own thing. But once I have that kind of padded down and even with the edge, now I'm going to take my iron and I'm just going to do like the outside inch or two here and get that set. Now I'm going to repeat that process going around the other three edges until I have the entire frame of the shirt fused down. Remember, if this is hard for you, there are people who cut their interfacing wider, say 14 inches, fuse it to the back first, and then cut it down. That drives me a little batty because I want to make sure that I've got interfacing. Well, first of all, it's critical that you have interfacing going all the way to the outside, and I'm worried that I won't get it placed where I want it to be for cutting in the final bit. So that worries me. This is why I do it this way, but there is another way to do it. If you find this really hard, you can definitely search for some other videos on how that process works and you can try it that way because there are usually more than one correct way to do things. In quilting, it's just a matter of which one works best for you and what you're trying to achieve. Now, if you do screw up and you end up with like a bump or something, if you pull that up right away, you separate the t-shirt from the interfacing, you are able to make adjustments to that. It's not like it's stuck there forever, but I would do it fairly quickly. I wouldn't wait a while. I would do it pretty, pretty quickly there. All right, so we've got our edges down. It's not absolutely perfect. I've got a little bit of just a sliver of interfacing hanging off the side here and here. That's gonna be fine. When I go to sew it to my sashing, it will, I'll just use that interfacing as my guide for my 12 and a half inch instead of wherever the t-shirt is. And that's how I'll maintain my accurate piecing. All right, so you can see visibly that the outside is looking very flat and because it's been fused to that interfacing. The center, not so much. It looks like I just pulled it out of the dryer, which I did this morning. So now we have to fuse that and we need the applique pressing sheet for it. Now this section here where there's no screen printing, I can fuse that ahead of time. What you don't wanna do is put your iron directly on screen printing ink because it will melt it and it will end up all of your iron instead of staying on your shirt where we wanna have it. All right, that's looking pretty good. We have all the areas where there is not a sewing machine fused down. All right, so this is an applique pressing sheet. It is critical. You absolutely have to have one of these. Otherwise, the screen printing ink is gonna end up all of your iron. It's not gonna be good. You can actually see the design through there. That's very nice. What it does is this is made of Teflon, the same stuff that your nonstick pans are. So I can put the iron down on top of this and the heat will go through, but it will prevent the screen printing ink from coming on the iron. It's gonna stay on your pressing sheet instead. Now, this does get really hot and it is not permeable. So if you have steam in your iron, empty that out right now or it's just gonna come shooting right back at you. It's not fun. So what you wanna do is just set your iron down and leave it on one side for a few seconds. And then since it gets so hot, I'd like to just go back and forth. So I'm gonna come over here next. And then I just kind of alternate coming in a little bit each time until I've hit everything. Now, if I also needed to fuse the bottom, I would do that too, but we've already gotten that done. All right, so when I'm all done, I'm just gonna go over it all with the iron. And this does get very, very hot, so do be careful of your fingers. We wanna make sure that everything doesn't burn you. 
that would not be good. All right, so this does not fuse completely every single time. So what we have to do is we have to check it. And if you have very thick screen printing ink, sometimes it will want to stick to the sheet and, and stay on it. The way I found to avoid that is to pull it and peel it back on a 45 degree angle. Now, if some of this were pulling up, what I would do is I would put it down, I would pat it a little bit, let it cool a little longer, it's actually still quite warm. And then I would come from the other direction once it had cooled a little bit and peel it back. So I'm looking at this, I can see that I'm not quite fused up here. And I could use a little bit more there, but the rest of it is looking really well. I mean, you can just see there's like a little bit of wrinkle there. That means we need a little bit extra time there with that iron. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that back down. We're just gonna spend a little bit more time with the iron there. Put the rest of the top. And we need it a little bit more over here. All right, peel at a 45 degree angle. Give it a check. That is looking really, really good. Really good. That is absolutely fantastic. Everything is in there pretty good. You can also double check if you're not sure by flipping it over and you should not see wrinkles. If you are seeing wrinkles on the back, it means that something didn't fuse quite right and you need to go back and do it again. Now, if you ended up with a situation where your t-shirt stretched larger, like significantly larger, more than an eighth of an inch, larger than your, um, fusible interfacing. Just go trim it up to 12 and a half inches again. No big deal. You just want to make sure that the interfacing is going all the way to the edges. So you probably want to trim it from this side. So that way you have nice stable edges when we go to sew it together. All right, now let's work on the problem child t-shirt. I know that somebody will comment on this. It's just occurred to me. Um, the interfacing has fusible on it, which means we do not pre-wash it. We do not iron it to get out wrinkles. You just have to cut it to size and fuse it, iron it as you fuse it. If you do it any other way, it will be unusable, will be a mess. You just do not want to do that. So no pre-washing, no ironing to get rid of wrinkles. All right, so this shirt is a little bit of a challenge, which is why I want to include it in this video. Because we have screen printing coming all the way out to the sides with this red and this blue over here. And then we also have our X and our don't up here are coming almost all the way to the tip. So we just have to take extra care as we do this. And we do have good chunks down here that and up here that do not have screen printing ink on them. So we're going to be able to fuse those down using the iron. And then the rest of it, we're going to have to use the applique pressing sheet because we absolutely never, ever, ever, if you learn nothing else from this video, it is do not put your iron directly in contact with the screen printing ink or it will ruin the shirt. You always have to have the applique pressing sheet in between those in order to preserve the design. All right, so let's get it started. Let's just start at this bottom corner. All right, remember, I'm not worried about what's happening over here. We're going to deal with that later. I'm getting the first inch or two in line in this bottom corner. We're going to get that down first. And we're going to do the same thing on the other side. Now, I do not have a lot to work with up here, but I do have some. So I'm going to be able to go, the screen printing ends right about here. So I just want to get a little bit above here so that I'm not putting the iron directly on that screen printing ink. Got a much smaller corner that we fused down, but it's enough. Do the same thing on the other side. All right, we've got our quarters down. Remember, we can't do anything here yet. We need our applique pressing sheet for that. But I can get this top nice and lined up and fuse just a quarter inch above, get this the top quarter inch down and fuse. And that's gonna be all I'm able to do at this moment. So just be really careful that you are angling that iron so that it is just on the tip and side of that shirt and not on that screen printing ink. All right, that very top is fused. Now I'm gonna be able to do the same thing on the bottom. 
go ahead and flip that around. I always like it to be away from me as I'm working on it. And I can do the same thing here. I can actually get quite a bit fused underneath as we come into that X and the Texas symbol. But I first I'm gonna go across the entire bottom here and get that bottom quarter inch fused. Again, be really careful not to hit any of the screen printing ink. All right, so everything else here is covered by screen printing ink. So absolutely everything else we need to do with the applique pressing sheet. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm kind of lining up this edge. I'm lucky this one is laying really nice and straight. They don't always, so you might need to do a little bit more fussing with that. But before I go all the way to the inside, I do want to get this situated first. So once I have everything in place, I can lay that pressing sheet over and I can just spend some time putting my iron on top of that and letting that fuse. I still pull up from an angle, check to make sure it's looking good, and it is, that looks fantastic. All right, so now let's do the same thing on the other side. Get as flat as we can, and as even with that interfacing edge, lay your sheet over and fuse the side. All right, that's looking good. You wanna really check when you're doing this to make sure there's no like lumps and bumps where stuff kinda got overlapped a little bit. It's a lot easier to have that happen when you have to fuse the sides using the applique pressing sheet because you can't actually see it while you're pressing it. And we've got a barrier in between there. But from here, we've got those edges all together. We're pretty flat in the center. So now we're good to just do what we did before. Just this time we're gonna go across and kind of work our way back and forth and then do the same thing on the bottom until we are all fused down. And I kind of just hold it, I count to kind of three to five. And then I lift and go to the other side. Now we're gonna do the bottom, same process. done I'd like to just go over the entire thing and just kind of slowly slide back and forth I'm gonna let this cool for just a second when you have really thick screen printing ink or a lot of it it's important to let it just cool down a little bit because then the ink kind of reattaches itself to the shirt instead of the applique pressing sheet and you won't have any problems later on once you've let it cool for just a minute, you can slowly start to peel it back. If you're not seeing any ink come up on the, the pressing sheet, then you're good. If you start to see anything lifting, just lay it back down and kind of go over it a little bit with your hand. It'll stick back down and then let it cool a little longer and then come again from the other side. All right, just a first look, I think I have a little bit more to fuse in the center here, I do. You can see where it's just a tad bit wrinkly. And if I flip it over, I can see that as well. We can see where it hasn't quite stuck in just a few areas. So I'm gonna go over that just one more time and then this will be good to go. You can actually see where some of the screen printing ink has come off. You can just kind of scratch at it with your fingernail to get it off and then it will not redeposit on your iron or on your other shirts. All right, we are looking pretty good here. I'm really happy with how this one has turned out. Looks good from the back. Uh, there's still a little bit, I could spend some more time over here, but this is definitely good enough to hold everything together, both for the long term and until we get it quilted. And then also for now, just as we're doing our assembly. So that's all you need to know in order to fuse your shirts. Make sure that you are putting fusible on the back of any t-shirt that you are creating. So when you have those pocket squares, fuse that before you piece them into four patches or the six by 12 and a half. Fuse those before you sew them together to create your 12 and a half inch block. But this is 
pretty much all you need to know. Also, if you're doing like what I did on my husband's quilt, where I used his old pajama pants as my sashing, you're gonna wanna add, probably add some fusible to that, depending on the weight of the fabric and how stretchy it is. It will make your life a lot easier if you do that before you start sewing. All right, so make sure you go check out the pattern for the t-shirt quilt and all the supplies you need to make them over on our website, shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. And remember, this is part of a larger series on how to make a t-shirt quilt. You can watch all the tutorials for free. And if you get the applique pressing sheet and the interfacing, which we need today, it's pretty critical to making one of these, then we'll give you the pattern for free. You can get all that on our website over at shop.quiltaddictsanonymous.com. All right, well, in the next one, we're finally gonna start sewing. And believe it or not, the majority of our work is actually already done at this point. We have gotten all of our blocks prepped by the time you finish putting all the fusible on them. And it goes really fast from this point because we're just essentially adding some sashing and then sewing our top together. So it goes pretty quick from here on out. All right, until next time, happy quilting.